Matt. Sergio. How are you? <coughs> A little hard to describe right now. <laughs> A lot of mad drinking. Sounds lonely. <laughs> Was that a birthday party? Oh, okay. Then you did good. Matt, you play video games. Yeah. Has there ever been a good video game that was based off of a movie? A video game based off of a movie? Yeah, a good one. Not Kingdom Hearts. Take that one out of the equation. That that can't exactly be based off of a movie. It's based off several movies. Several? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But has there been a good one? Well, I remember hearing about them actually trying to make a Stay Alive video game, but... It never happened. It never happened. No. And I love video games, but now I feel <laughs> like an idiot. <laughs> it's fun. Is it hard to make a movie based off a of video game? A bit. Uh, the, the guys that did the first Silent Hill movie did fantastic. The Resident Evil movies? <laughs> uh, I, I liked Apocalypse, but the, the uh, after that, it just... Why the fuck are people still watching them? I don't know. They like Mila Djokovic and they just want to see her titties. Or lack thereof. Exactly! to Friendly Film Perspectives. I'm your host, Sergio Beretta. And I'm the other host, Matthew Ravellis. Other host. <laughs> other co-host. Yeah, but you, you said that we were going to be hosts. Yeah, we are. If, if we throw in co-host on one of us, they're not exactly a host host. Ah, true. I hate your logic. I come on. Whenever we have special guests, we usually say we're the hosts. Yeah, I'm that special guest. that special guest. Exactly. Any more special guests? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Well, last time, last episode was the Rocketeer, mm-hmm. and that was fun. Yeah. I thought it was badass that you did it again. <laughs> so this uh, time around, I've already gave you two hints. Ah oh, shit. And that was it was in the eighties, and it was animated. Oh fuck. So. Yeah. Let's just get down to the introduction. Animation in the 1980s was, other, was undergoing a huge shift. There was a sudden rise in Saturday, of Saturday morning cartoons that brought new shows like Scooby-Doo to the masses and older cartoons like Tom and Jerry for the next generation. Unfortunately, this also made adult see animation as kid stuff. From this age, the 80s were built on countless merchandise-driven cartoons like Key Man and Jamming the holograms and shows based off classic characters like the Smurfs and the DuckTales. Well, DuckTales. Yet, it also paved the way for new animation to target an adult audience. We have Ralph Bashke making animated films with dark themes such as Heavy Traffic and Fritz the Cat. Japanese animation, aka anime, stepped in to show the West how animation could be done with films like Akira and the works of Studio Ghibli like My Neighbor Totoro and Grave of the Fireflies. This made people take animation seriously once again. Luckily, anime is what we'll be focusing on on this episode. Okay. Wait a second. But not the way you think. This film combines both the fascination of the toy commercial show and the delightfulness of anime. Ta- Matt, it's time to roll out. Oh, God. With 1986's... Transformers the movie! Holy shit! <laughs> Holy shit! What? Did you not expect this? Almost, but I was expecting initial D more. <laughs> Mainly because he threw anime in this, and I was like, oh my fucking god, are we watching initial D? <laughs> In production with Toy Animation, the studio that brought, you know, Dragon Ball Z, Sensei, uh, and Sailor Moon, came this adaptation of the famous Tanaka Tomi and Hasbro Toys. The film was designed in order to expand upon the popularity of the show, as well as introduce new characters to sell in a new line of toys. Mm-hmm. The film takes place 20 years after the events of the show's second season in the far-off future of 2005. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a darker tone 
than that of the original series. So expect a lot of spilled oil. <laughs> it stars the familiar cast of Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime and Frank Walker as Megatron, but also features the likes of Eric Idle, Judd Nelson, and Leonard Nimoy. It was also the final role of legendary actor-director Orson Welles oh, fuck. and jazz musician Scatman Crothers, a.k.a. that black guy from The Shining. Oh, shit. Yeah. Another thing to note, the soundtrack to this movie is super fucking 80s. Oh, God. <laughs> the question is, are you ready to take on some Decepticons? <laughs> Roll out, motherfucker. <laughs> Let's do this shit. It's a Transformers movie. On tight. The most incredible rock and roll adventure ever is here. Feed him to the shark guns. Starring Judd Nelson as Hot Rod. Leonard Nimoy as Galvatron. And Orson Welles. I am a unicron. Beyond good, beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination. Transformers, the movie. Coming to a theater near you this August. So that was the Transformers movie. We've just finished watching it. You just saw the trailer. Matt. I, uh, I, I don't think I want to hear any 80s music for a while. <laughs> this is from your list of movies that you had never seen before. <laughs> and I regret this. Why is that? It, it was just like one big 80s music video that had nothing to do anything with the lyrics to the song at all. He explained to the people listening to this the plot of the movie. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> there is a giant transformer by the name of Unicron, voiced by Orson Welles, that's flying around space and must destroy planets in order to survive. Then, and then... Autobots and Decepticons are in a war. Uh, shooty, shooty, uh, shoot, pow, pow. pow. <laughs> uh, Optimus dies. Matrix of leadership. Then Unicron wants Megatron to get said Matrix of leadership in order for him to go to Cybertron and destroy it. But the only way he can get it is if he has the Matrix of leadership. Leadership? Did, did I'm compu- confused. <laughs> I've seen this movie twice. And I've seen it when they had commercials, because <laughs> it allows room to breathe. Watching it in one go, it's it, it it's a journey. Even though it's a short movie, it's I I feel it's, I feel like I just watched all three Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> it feels longer than the actual Michael Bay Transformer movie. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go sob in the corner for a little bit. <laughs> Six and a half hours later. So you're, uh, you seem like a fan of Transformers. I was. <laughs> Are you, you're really distraught by this movie. Yes. <laughs> All right, so why don't you point out what pissed you off the most or what made you really upset or exhausted. I, I'm just going to let you rant for a bit. You have a platform to rant. I, I, I don't even know what to rant about anymore. <laughs> His brain hurts because he had to. <laughs> it's just an overload of 80s music over over fighting and robots. And that's all it is. 
Yes. Remember it. That's the reason people don't like the new Transformers movies. Because they don't lack of 80s music? No, because there's a lack of a giant robot fighting throughout the movie. And now you see what happens is there's too much robot fighting throughout the movie. I didn't mind the robot fighting. It was just the fighting 80s. over the 80s music. <laughs> it, it was... They, they didn't need any of the 80s music. They could have mm-hmm. just added some weird, you know, trumpets and drums and shit. Nah, dude. To, it was the 80s. To, to just, the fighting. They just put a bunch of synth in hair metal. Not, not to mention, you know, Axl Rose's fucking uh, Starscream. Starscream! Megatron, I'm here for you! I mean, yeah, I know it wasn't actually him, but st- it sounds like him. <laughs> it sounds like his bitchy, whiny, raspy voice. My fellow Decepticons, as your new leader, I... Oh, I'm glad we, I'm glad we didn't have to put up with that for too long. <laughs> this movie's really, really short. It's only 80 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but Starscream was only there for like, what, 15 minutes? Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> when Galvatron came back. When Megatron got turned into Galvatron, he just storms in like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> it was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, bitch. So, um, since it's animated, what did you think of the animation? The, the animation was pretty cool. I mean, the, the details that they put on uh, Unicron, uh, that was crazy. But um, t- toward the end when they when they had um, the, uh, the Dinobots bashing in on his ass and then flying away from him, you could see where it's like uh, they started to fuck up on the size differences between Unicron, the Dinobots, and Cybertron. Mm-hmm. Like, Cybertron was like, let's say, the size of the moon. Unicron was a bit smaller than that, and the Dinobots are obviously like the size of cars. Yeah. But then when they're fighting him, and they zoom out, the Dinobots are like the size of, uh... I guess Rhode Island. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, I still have to keep the thing small but yeah. big. And Unicron's nearly as big as Cybertron. You're just like, it's that eighties music, dude. Yeah. It's it's fucking. It's fucking. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the voice acting? Uh, for all the other characters, excluding Darkscreen, uh, Darkscreen, <laughs> Starscream, pretty good, pretty good. I, I keep losing my train of thought because so much 80s. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know what the 80s are like, pop, uh, uh, snort a line of coke real quick <laughs> and watch this movie. While drinking a Jolt Cola. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my reaction watching this movie like beforehand was always just like, eh, I guess I'll watch it. I have nothing better to do. So not to actually watch it again for this and just without commercial breaks and stuff is just really really tiring yeah, yeah. and it it, it it does seem like one giant ass commercial they actually had to work with Hasbro in order to figure out what toys what ca- toys pretty much characters were getting killed off in order to add new stuff oh oh yeah so imagine that board meeting where they're all go like oh well, yeah we're killing Optimus Optimus has had his run but he's the lead. he's had his, his run. run. What would what would you say to Mr. Orson Welles if he came up to you and and uh, told you he was going to be in the Transformers movie? Um, I don't really know because I, I I I know hardly any of his work. Well, he had a famous quote about this movie he said before his death, which was, you know what I did when I woke up this morning? I voiced a giant planet eating, a giant planet that eats other planets for a toy commercial. What have I done with myself? (laughs) Leonard Nimoy, who was the voice of Galvatron in this, regretted doing that. Had for years, 
until they offered him a role in Transformers 3 <laughs> for Sentinel Prime. So you mean I don't get to be Galvatron? <laughs> well, we'd rather have your career live long and prosper. I mean... The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. That's what we're telling you. Now go repopulate a species. Uh, aren't you one of the little rascals? <laughs> Eric Idle? <laughs> Was he again? He was Retgar. He was in the junk planet with all the other junk robots. Sir Robin? Yes. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> Speaking in nothing but advertising lingo. You know, I think that hurt nearly as much as all <laughs> the 80s music. How so? Just trying to figure out what the fuck he was talking <laughs> about. What'd you think of the dancing there in that part? Safety dance. Dun, 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 dun. That should have been playing. And we dance if we want to, but it was weird on Ankovic. I don't care. Cute, cute clips from the safety dance. <laughs> Optimus is deaf. <laughs> Did it affect you or not? Not really, because I'm pretty sure since this movie up until now, Optimus has probably what has probably died like what eight times. A shitload of times, yeah. So you're just desensitized by it. Yeah. Well, when I was watching uh, Revenge of the Fallen and Optimus died, I was like, <laughs> Did you notice the darker tone in this movie compared to the series? Yeah, they actually showed, uh, well, I, I don't really remember much of the series from when I watched it with my siblings, but when I tried to watch it on Netflix... I got through the first episode and stopped. <laughs> yeah, the nostalgia goggles did not work. <laughs> this show... This show renders them inept. You are really, really, really cheesed by this movie. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if you want to turn it into a drinking game... By all means, do it. I'm sure it would be fun. Q picture, Q, Q, an exact representation of Matt <laughs> during this movie. <laughs> there it is, Ginger Snaps. Hopefully, <laughs> if not, another picture represent me, Def. <laughs> here's a pic. Now here's another pic, and here's another one. <laughs> Three pics. <laughs> is there any part? Oh, this movie that stood out to you. Uh, when Grimlock, when Grimlock completely intimidated that entire group of whatever the fuck they were to go kill their fucking <laughs> intimidating the shark gods. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Foot stomp. Me Grimlock. <laughs> Is there anything you didn't like? <laughs> All the music. Uh -huh. Too much fucking music. You couldn't go two minutes, probably not even one minute, without hearing another fucking song start up. <laughs> well, at the be at the beginning, after well, we weren't recording like the intro, you thought we were gonna watch Initial D for a bit. Yeah, yeah, I was like 80% sure we were going to watch Initial D. Are you disappointed that we didn't get to an actual anime? A little. <laughs> well, probably moderately now since we just watched this. Yeah. Would you, well, because all you have left are anime movies. Yay. Yeah. Would you consider this anime? Well, seeing as how it, it was drawn out by a Japanese animation team, yes. And no, because it, it was it, it was meant as a target for American viewers, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, toys are based off a um, uh, Tanaka Tomi toy known as, I think, uh, 
Micro Man or Disco Man or Discus Man or something like that. I forget what it is. Hmm. But that's what they're based off. And Hasbro just expanded upon that. Final rating. Because I think you just want to be done with this already. Uh, out of 10 still, right? Yeah. Out of, well, well, yeah, out of 10. Uh, a 4. Let me explain. Is it because of lack of Nazi deaths? Because <laughs> that's usually... No, 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 no. It's not lack of Nazi deaths. It's oversaturation of 80s music. Okay. Now, if we if we did a drinking game version of this, if we ever rewatch it, this thing's definitely getting an 8 or a 9. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Probably. Anything else besides the 80s music? Uh, Axl Rose. Axl Rose. Okay, so Scar Screw Voice, 80s music. Plot? Uh, or lack thereof. Yeah, to be honest, I forgot what the fuck the plot Dude, was. Dude, we even forgot what the hell the name of the kid was. Oh, yeah, we just, <laughs> we just guessed some totally different name. Then when they said it, we were like, oh. oh. <laughs> Daniel, shit, okay. And oh. his name was Donnie. <laughs> well, um, my final rating, I mostly asked him the questions because I have seen this one before. I probably go higher than him, but not too high. Probably like a six, cause it's it's not the most easy watch ever. But if you're a person that really likes Transformers and you've watched the series and stuff, it actually bridges the gap between two and three. It's not the best thing in the world. The plot is kind of all over the place. The animation is really, really, really good. Um, the action scenes and the sequences are well done, well drawn. The voice acting is top notch, and but the biggest complaint is pretty much I think pacing is the biggest issue. Yeah. yeah. And for Matt, the music is a big issue. For me, I don't mind it that much. So, but my fi- yeah, my final rating would be six, and yours is four. Four. All right. And uh, before we go, Matt. Oh God. You. Know that October is coming up next week. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know what that means. Horror movies! Well, that, and it means ghost schools, vampires, and scary religious zealots. <laughs> Good point. Roam the streets and horrific images come out in full force. That means for the next five weeks, we will be, nothing, we will be doing nothing but horror films in what I call the five stages of horror. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Um, I didn't write it here. Actually, I'm going to go on script for this one. So, we will be covering horror, but subgenres of horror. It'll be horror with another genre. Hmm. So, think of it as horror plus other genre, like horror plus sci-fi, horror plus action, horror plus this. Okay. So five horror films were drawn for the Fedora Justice, which you will be finding out in the next five weeks what they Son are. Of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you still gotta guess. Ah. In order for us to tackle what the website on the website we're gonna, I'm gonna be doing the uh, spectacular cinema villains of pop culture, where we'll be doing mini retrospective on villains, a top of the crop list of the top twelve horror movie icons. A special film a week of the Amityville Horror. Oh, God. And, of course, this is ours for the site, Five Stages of Horror. You ready for this? Yeah. Month of October? Yeah. yeah. Oh, kick ass. Where can we find you? You can find me at ohheylookatthatthing.tumblr.com. Okay. And as always, you can find me at twitter.com slash Serge Barrett. That's the Serge Barrett thing. Serge Barrett tumbles at tumblr.com and on the Serge Barrette site uh, we post all this on YouTube or to host it and you know add visual elements and we're also now on dysfunctional.com so that's pretty awesome Woo! at Tasus's site um, and uh, Jennifer who's been in the background making noises all the time you can find her at Jenny Chante at tumblr.com and Jenny Chante at twitter <laughs> I know, I just wanted to throw you in there because it. <laughs> I was just being quiet, checking Instagram, texting my friends. I mean, like 20 minutes ago, I, I said loudly, Yeah, I forgot to put my phone on live. Yeah. <laughs> here, here we go, hearing your phone going off. <laughs>
And these people know I appreciate sword art only. And as always, we end with a line from the movie. And that is... Grimlock Smash. Grimlock Smash! And also, um, we're doing classic horror next week. Alright. Universal Monster. Just keep thinking about it. Bye, guys!